on the roof. Raptors hover over a withered carcass. But there is scent of fresher meat in the wind. Pickings had been slim for Nabumba's pride since her fight with a startled warthog. The lioness is limping from the encounter. And even the pride's big male, Jabu, wonders when his next meal will come. There's been no kill for three days, and Nabumba's cubs are hungry. Survival is tough across this tawny continent. And for the lions of Pinta Reserve, etched into the heart of Zululand, only those with speed and cunning will eat. For this pride anyway, it's been a long time between meals. had waited too long for his lioness to feed him. Overnight, his stealth carried him into the path of a careless zebra. The rest of the herd is still skittish. One animal had already lost his tail to a hungry pride, but for the dazed stallion, it was all over in seconds. The big male watches his kill from a distance, exhausted by the chase, exhilarated by the sport. Jabu will feast later. Tired from the hunt, he needs to rest. But his prey will be safe. Few scavengers will risk the sudden return of the lion king. Bamba's pride across Mziki Marsh. This vast tract of savannah is favoured by the lions in the dry air of winter, but it's a region also shared by Pinda's giraffe and white rhino population. Through modern times, most of southern Africa's wildlife has been ravaged by hunting and habitat loss. Farmland, overgrazed and buffeted by domestic stock, has ripped the heart out of the original bush. The open, broad-leaved woodland, acacia bushveld and wetland habitat had all but disappeared, taking with it the wildlife. A 
few years ago, the Pinder project was born. 17,000 hectares of farmland bought up in KwaZulu-Natal along South Africa's eastern seaboard. What followed was the largest game restocking program ever seen on the subcontinent. The land was overgrazed to a certain extent and it wasn't in very good shape. They put all these farms together, put a perimeter fence around it and then brought in a lot of game. We brought in elephant, we brought in rhino. We started off with those sort of animals and then started with, with cheetah, bringing in cheetah onto the reserve, mainly to get them used to the area before the lions came on because the lion is a more superior predator as such and would, would dominate the cheetahs. We wanted to get them settled first before the lions came in. Andrew Lewis is habitat manager at Pinda, one of those committed to the restoration of Southern Africa's ecosystem. Pinda is the Zulu word for return, and the aim of his company, Conservation Corporation Africa, is to return the land to its traditional wildlife, and at the same time, restore the habitat to its original state. Pinda is cautiously open to top-level tourism, limited and luxurious. Dreams of extending the green frontier require funds, and the reserve's lion pride has already earned its keep. The lions on this property are actually generating revenue for the property through ecotourism and that there are a benefit to the wildlife because of the draw card. And a few animals, lions, elephants for example and, and rhinos and, and possibly giraffes but those are your main ones that people come to see and we've been very fortunate to be able to have lions on the property and I think those lions that we, we have have given us amazing value for our guests and by getting a guest in here we're getting revenue into the area and that's benefiting wildlife as a whole. Jabu has returned to his kill. He licks the bloated carcass, but still there is no feeding. Lions will gloat over their prey, delaying the first bite until the meat ripens. For Jabu, the prospect of the meal is to be relished as much as the eventual feast. Bumbo's pride is on the prowl. The older cubs are ten months now, weaned, but still dependent upon the Bumbo for food. The cubs are learning to stalk, but they won't kill for another six months. Young male lions are usually ejected from the pride when they are about two years old, fending for themselves they form hunting groups with other isolated males. Nabambo's cubs aren't sure what to do with prey so close. But the lioness isn't far behind. Their time for hunting will come. Nabambo's four-year-old daughter also lives with a pride. 
She is the mother of the group's youngest offspring. Seven week twins, Umveli and Damana. The little cubs have been hidden since birth and now stay close within the protective circle. little time for his small cub. When he is older, Damana will hunt with his father, but for the moment, the big male has nothing to do with his young son. Dejected, the cub finds solace among his siblings. The young giraffe lies helpless in the grass. The animal's complicated vertebra means it is unable to rest its neck for any length of time. Lack of mobility means blood to the brain slows, leaving the animal disabled. Efforts to lift the head fail, and rather than leave the giraffe vulnerable to predators, the young bull is shot by rangers. Once again, the bambo and her pride will go hungry. But the big lioness senses another kill nearby. A young giraffe slain by humans will provide meat for her cubs. Leaving the pride, Nabambo follows the scent. Left alone, the older cubs know the drill. 
They will wait for Nabambo's call to take them to the kill. The day moves into shadow. The cubs are restless and a little afraid. Adult lions have few enemies, but cubs, even those ten months old, are at the mercy of leopard and other predators. Nabambo has reached the kill, but her daughter is there first. Even though females hunt together, rivalry for the prey is fierce. The big lioness begins the trek back for her cubs, but the youngsters have heard her call and they meet halfway. Nabambo settles herself in the long grass. The cubs are unfamiliar with her behaviour. A female will usually head the charge with any kill, splitting the hide of the victim and leading the way for the pride to eat. But there is human scent around the giraffe and the big lioness is cautious. She watches her cubs, hidden, alert to any potential threat. The cubs are curious, confused by this new smell. Lioness moves in for a final check, but she has already made up her mind. The carcass is tainted. There are foreign traces, a dangerous ambience. Instinct tells her this is not food fit for her cubs. Disappointed, the bamboo moves away. The scent of another night stalk already in the wind. days, Jabu has returned to his kill with another younger male. Three-year-old Tembi is a son from a previous liaison with Nabambo, and the two paired up after Tembi was ousted from the pride. Pride males are lazy and will gladly let the females track down prey. But the theory that males won't hunt is a fallacy. Any hungry male will hunt for himself when no free lunch is provided by the lioness, hyenas or other predators. Smaller 
creatures scatter in the vicinity of the two lions. There will be no hunting for a while. Bloated after the zebra kill, both males will sleep for the next day, oblivious of their surroundings. Lions hunting in pairs or groups have a success rate of around 30% in daylight. But studies show single hunters are more successful at night. Lions are sociable cats, the only group to take part in communal hunts. Ambush is an important part of the lion's strategy. Often one pride female will round up the prey from the front, driving it towards a second lioness. As in most cases, the pride male will only get involved if he has to. Accidents involving humans are rare in Southern Africa's game reserves. Our primal fear of being eaten has been well documented. But in fact, lions seldom attack if they're not provoked. Their pinder Great care is taken to limit the number of people viewing game. Emphasis is placed on causing the animal as little stress as possible. Man isn't a part of their natural food source. They don't normally go out and, and hunt people. I think your lions are opportunists, sir. And I certainly think that if your lion is very hungry, under stress, I don't think they'll necessarily go out to, to hunt you down, but if you interfere with them, they'll certainly kill you. There's a good chance they might eat you at the same time. With all animals, it's how you treat them is what's the reaction you're going to get back from them. Certainly at Pinda, all our guides go through a training course and they're all brought up to a certain standard. There is a certain operating ethic with regards to viewing animals and we certainly try and be as sensitive to the animals as possible. Cradled within the arms of the Yvonne Mountains and the Indian Ocean, Pinda covers one of the most diverse regions of Africa. Here are found seven different ecosystems, from palm savanna and bush felt to rare sand forest and dense thorn bush, all restored from the pastoral belt which had swept down the east coast. cotton, pineapple and cattle farms once stood, lion now roam their habitat again, alongside some traditional neighbours. 